Today's breakdown is brought to you by NFL Game Pass. All of our film analysis would not be possible without access to NFL Game Pass. So get to gamepass.nfl.com to sign up for the upcoming NFL season. Welcome back to another edition of Cover One, the film room. I'm your host, Eric Turner. Today, I am joined by a special guest, safety from the Buffalo Bills, Dean Marlowe. What's going on, brother? How you doing? Thanks for having me. Hey, no problem. Thanks for taking time out of your day. Obviously, this offseason is a little odd. We're dealing with a lot of different things. You guys are, you know, obviously doing some different types of workouts uh, during this pandemic. Uh, it's a little less hands-on, but as we're going to talk about, you're going to see, guys, that um, it's still quite uh, complex. I mean, the Bills are not slouching when it comes to these offseason workouts. Not, not letting these guys just hit beach muscles all day. But, Dean, I want to talk about those workouts um, you know, that you guys are doing, you know, your frequency of workouts a day, maybe some of the Zoom meetings or virtual meetings that you're doing. Walk us through a daily basis now in, in this, uh, you know, during this pandemic uh, versus what would be happening during a regular season. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, we started our off-season program um, three weeks ago and you know, the virtual meetings have been good. They've been they've been slow. You know, coaches have been taking their time. You know, the same old stuff going over the defenses, the expectations. Um, so, every, so everything has been going good. I mean, no one's no one's forced to do anything. Um, we're actually just you know trying to come together as a team virtually, um, which is great. You know, with the new additions that we have, our draft picks, our undrafted free agents, the new uh, free agent signings. So everyone is a uh, is actually enjoying what we have going on. So um, when it comes to, you know, the workout situation, there is, I mean, there's guys that have access to gyms. There's guys that have access to fields. There's guys that don't have any access to anything. Um, so our strength staff is doing an amazing job trying to keep everybody uh, focused and, you know, just the repetitive nature that's going on with, you know, wake up, do the same thing every day. Um, you know, our coaches are making it fun for us. We have we have different goals that they're setting for us. We have different competition uh, things that we've been doing, uh, making sure that we're eating right, working out, staying accountable. Uh, so everything is actually pretty pretty good. I mean, they gave us this week off, you know, just to kind of re uh, regroup and, you know, just stay mentally fresh uh, for when we start back up next week. Now talk about, uh, you know, the strength and conditioning, you know, competition that you guys have going. Uh, maybe what they're asking of you, how you're tracking it, and just how they're kind of making it fun. Because like you said, every day is almost like Groundhog Day. You're doing pretty much the same thing. You're very limited on movement as far as going into the public and whatnot. Uh, so what type of things are they doing to, you know, make things fun, make things, uh, you know, competitive every day? So, um, so every player has their own specific, you know, workout regimen, uh, you know, given to your strengths, your weaknesses, um, what you need to work on. Uh, things that you can improve on with your body, you know, weight wise and, and et cetera. So, um, you know, there, there's different things that they have, you know, we have meetings. Um, so you get points for meetings. Uh, you also get points for sending in certain like healthy meals. Uh, you get points for, you know, who can send in their videos of what the workout is for the day. Um, right. So our strength staff is, is making this uh, actually really fun and competitive. Uh, to see, you know, what the guys are doing. You know, if we need anything, we can reach out to them in a heartbeat. Um, everything is good, and, and and all the all the guys seem to be on board uh, to to continue doing this, and as long as we'll be doing this without access to the facility. Now, the virtual meetings with your it's probably what your position coaches, right? Yeah, we have uh, we have like defense some days. We'll start off as a whole defense, and then maybe some days we'll start off with just our DBs. Some days we'll just start off with safeties, uh, and then we go in the team meeting uh, towards the end of the uh, the afternoon. So it's almost like a normal practice where you start at uh, you know in the individual time, then you work you know more of a unit, and then you know seven on seven, eleven on eleven, and then go to teamwork. Um, now, what type of things do you guys cover in those? We'll start at the the bottom. You know your positional meetings. Let's. Uh, maybe touch upon what um, you guys can really cover when it comes to in maybe installing the defense, installing coverages. I mean, is all that stuff done on basically a virtual whiteboard? Uh, so the good thing is, is that, you know, we have guys who are returning, guys who have played in this system, 
and um, guys that just, you know, are, have formed a good brotherhood to be together. So we're all comfortable in knowing what our installation is. And, you know, it just starts off just, you know, we, we make sure everyone is doing well just personally. You know, like, yeah. given the situation that's that's uh, going on, everyone is, is together and we're making sure everyone is fine with their families and whatnot. And then we just go into, you know, our goals as a secondary and, and where we were last year to what we want to be and, you know, constantly improving. And then it goes into the installation and there's no rush. There's... You know, it's all about mastering our defense. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, everyone has a role. Everyone has their part. And, you know, certain guys are better than others when it comes to, uh, you know, understanding the defense. And uh, just taking your part and what you know and what you think you need to improve on and mastering that. Yeah, that self-awareness, that self-scouting is – really the the crux of improving in the off season. So I'm glad you mentioned that. And you, you talked about roles and obviously one of the roles that you played last year uh, was that big nickel, that Buffalo nickel, that Buffalo personnel grouping on that side of the ball on the defensive side of the ball. Um, you and Saran Neal were kind of, you know, in and out in that role um, throughout the season. It's obviously a personnel matchup type personnel grouping where you're getting a bigger guy, you know, usually a third safety type, uh, in and around the box, along the fringe of the box. Um, now, is that something that you played, uh, that role? Did you play that in Carolina, or is that something you got um, when you were in college or high school? Is that, you know, that nickel position, that slot position, is that something that you played before? Uh, I didn't play it in Carolina, but I, I was fortunate enough to play in, uh, in, in college my senior year. Um, as, uh, as I told you that we were uh, my – my my defensive court my defensive coordinator at JMU is the defensive coordinator for the LA Rams Brandon Staley and uh, you know I'm I'm thankful and I'm grateful for him for introducing me to that role as a senior <laughs> in college and now it's it's actually paid off you know a little bit <laughs> yeah right <laughs> um, it's something again last year uh, you played. 81 snaps, according to Pro Football Focus, from the slot. So you obviously have to learn the safety position. And obviously that's not the easiest thing when and you have two leaders back there in Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, who probably, you know, the level of play that they they put on the field is a, is a standard that I'm sure they want to trickle down throughout the safety room. But you obviously have to learn their roles because those are safety uh, positions are interchangeable. But you also have to learn that nickel position. I mean, that's a lot to ask of someone who, you know, I mean, last year you played just over, what, 200 snaps or something like that, which is 216 snaps with that's including special teams. You're obviously a big special teams guy, too. So that is a lot to ask of someone with that minimal reps. I mean, is that something that um, a role that maybe you've uh, you've you grown into and and how do you prepare for that? Um, it's, you know, is at this point. You, you got to be able to do everything, you know, and availability is is the best thing for you. And uh, whether you're available, if someone's hurt, whether you're available of knowing a position that you're not comfortable with or knowing, that's that's your best asset. And uh, for me, you know, I'm, I've always been a smart guy and I've always known the ins and outs, the X's and O's of the, the, the football side. And um, it's just, you know, a, a lot of it is, is knowing how you take that approach and, and preparing. And I mean, you got to prepare like you're starting, you know? Right. And so with great guys, you know, like like Micah and, and, and Poyer, um, we each hold each other accountable. And, you know, I get them better, they get me better. Um, so you, you just have to know, I mean, football is the same when we were younger and nothing has really changed. It's just knowing the, the amount that an individual can handle at one at one point at one time and um you know i'm i'm a living living proof of that because i can do that uh so it's it's not as easy as you think it is but it's not as hard because it's, right. you know if you prepare if you prepare you're, you're fine and you know it's just it's just football at the end of the day you know you know and, and that's great because you know you always hear oh this guy is super athletic but he may not understand the x's and o's the y's and why things happen and, you know, what he's seeing on the field. And so that's why, you know, uh, good football IQ, smart, dependable guys that understand what they're seeing um, and understand even when you're in the meeting rooms and trying to, you know, because football, when you're looking at it in a playbook, is a language. And 
you know, being able to have coaches that teach that language to you and then you being able to digest it and then put it to work on the field is obviously something you've done really well. Again, playing, you know, in several organizations and, you know, playing several different roles. So that's obviously one of the cores of your game and why you've been able to, uh, you know, continue to play in this league at, you know, different positions. And as I mentioned, I mean, special teams is huge and you're able to um, do that as well. And so, um, you know, jumping into the X's and O's, Dean, I want to get to the film because that is the fun part of this. We're going to put your knowledge to test here and, and show fans your football IQ here, man. So let's go ahead and jump into the film room. Cool. Sounds good. All right, Dean. The first play is a second and seven situation. We're in the first quarter against the Titans. And the Titans are one of those teams that you played a decent amount of reps against because, they, again, they use a lot of 12 personnel. The Eagles was another game. Um, so anytime – you know, these offenses came out with a heavy set of 12 personnel and had you know, two or three tight ends that were obviously really good. Uh, the Bills like to play that Buffalo nickel. And so you are right here to the top of the screen. And the Titans are in 12 personnel, but they have two receivers, um, you know, one to the top, one to the bottom. And you're going to see the Titans motion Corey Davis to the bottom of the screen into the boundary, guys. The ball's on the left hash. The ball's obviously right here. So you're going to see Dean... Go ahead and shift down to the bottom. Dean, I want you to talk about why you're shifting and moving with Corey Davis here. It's not man coverage, right? No, it's not at all. So um, so if you if you take it back up to the top, um, for guys who don't know, um, Delaney Walker is a is a really good tight end uh throughout the years and um it's a three by one formation. So yep. I'm to the left, um, obviously because there's more threats to the left. Any kind so of receiver, yep. yes. So any kind of receiver, whether it, it would have been Corey Davis or Delaney Walker, happened to move, then I would also move. Just given, you know, that they're a, a receiver threat. So here at the bottom, um, obviously Corey Davis moves, so I shift with change of strength, and um, we're in zone coverage right here, not man. Um, so here, you know, the formation is is into the boundary which is a little odd in our, in our league. Um, sure. So knowing that I don't have to go as far to my landmark because I am in the boundary, uh, I can just kind of pop and stay. Um, if something takes me to the flat, I go. Uh, if I don't, I kind of just, you know, figure out what's going on. So talk about your alignment after he settles in. Talk about your alignment. And uh, this is what? This is cover three, right? Yeah, this is cover three. So uh, my alignment right now, um, he's a little bit tight. So I can probably be like where I'm at, maybe a little bit head up, one by four from the man. Uh, he's off the ball. So, I mean, it's kind of just all she wrote after. I know I don't I don't hear any firing off from the lineman. Uh, you can just get that feel like when you're when you playing football, you can just feel if it's run pass. And I didn't really feel like it was run. So I got right. my eyes strictly to him uh, for a quick second. And I can just feel something going on because he didn't try to come block me. He didn't do yeah. anything. Um, so feeling the whole pass, I can perif him trying to give me another move and, you know, flats in my name. So I have anything that wheels out. Right. So your technique on in cover three is – you know, if you see a guy to go to the flats and run an out and up or a wheel up the sideline like Corey Davis tries doing here, that's your man, right? So it goes from, you know, playing a cover three to more of like a pattern matching cover three uh, in this situation, wouldn't you say? Right. Yep. So here, um, you know, I'm a step behind uh, and my technique as a DB, I can, I can see, you know, his eyes getting big and I know the ball's coming and... I'm not to panic because I don't want to get a pass interference call. Right. And trusting yourself, trusting your technique, and you know when you see his his arms go up, you know don't try to just swatch your hand. You got to play through his hands, and that's exactly what I did. Again, this is one of those plays where you know you're shifting with the passing strength, so the strength is now into the boundary to the right side of the screen here. Now, of course, the Titans run a little play action, so um, you know you do have to get your eyes in the backfield quickly. But as you said. You know, your ability to your your situational awareness of not hearing those pads popping and hearing these guys all blocking down and, and executing, uh, you know, run blocks here, run fits, um, that 
alerted you to, you know, something going on. Of course, add in Corey Davis not really blocking you. Um, and this play fake really doesn't mean too much. Um, but you'll see as Mariota hits the top of the drop, good job of looking off uh, the safety there and then throwing it deep. And yes, you may be out of phase just a little bit. But talk about what you're you're playing here uh, as that ball is dropping in. I know you mentioned, you know, the eyes, the helmet going up. Uh, but at what point did you realize, OK, he is the one getting the ball here? Uh, when I seen him, his body language, when I seen him like turn around and try to put up his arms, I'm like, all right, just just what we do every day. Just play through his arms, play through his hands. And um, I did that and I was not going to catch the ball. <laughs> it's not accurate. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great job of what, you know, a lot of coaches call playing up through the pocket. You know, even though, you you know, you may be out of phase in zone coverage or in man coverage, you can't panic. As Dean said, you have to play all the way through the whistle. And Dean does a good job of doing that, obviously not interfering as well. Um, and you got to also realize, guys, you know, this throw by Mariota has got to have a little arc to it. It's got to drop in up and over Marlowe. So this is a good job by him of, again, staying um at the very least, not necessarily in phase, but staying in a position where that ball has to come in over the top of him, right, Dean? I mean, that's something that um, I'm sure your DB coaches, you know, you guys run a lot of trail technique, a lot of dog technique where you're getting underneath the guy and, say, cover two man or whatnot. Um, so you guys are used to doing this. Um, and even though you're out of phase, you're, you're still in the play. And that's what, you know, that's what defensive back coaches want. You know, you may lose in a release. You may lose... Uh, during the drive phase of a receiver's route. But what matters is making a play at the catch point, When you say, Dean? Yeah, I mean, it's just how you finish. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Exactly, and it was a great job of finishing on this play. The ball goes incomplete, and the Bills move on uh, to another down and distance. All right, Dean, we're in the third quarter, 3.13 on the clock. It's first and 10, ball's on the 20-yard line. Game is tied at 7. The Titans bring out 13 personnel, so that's one running back, three tight ends, and they line those guys into the boundary to the right side of the screen here. And so I want you to talk about um, what you see from Mariota and Derrick Henry here and what they're trying to do on this run uh, against your defense. Obviously, the the uh, box is stacked. And uh, what kind of run is this? And uh, to walk us through your reads here. All right. So knowing the, knowing the kind of offense that the, the Titans are, they are downhill play action team I and mean, they have a really a really good run game um so here 13 personnel like you said i'm expecting a little bit more downhill running uh maybe a play action mm -hmm. especially on first and 10 um this run right here is obviously a zone um and i think mario might have might have audible to you know like a zone read Right. Kind of deal. Um, we're in man coverage right here. So, you know, Tredavis has, you know, the outside gap. I have the gap in between. Poyer has the gap between 85 and 81. They know that we're a, gaps, uh, a gap sound defense. Yeah. Um, so right here, it comes down to, you know, integrity and who, who maintains their gap and wins their, their 111th and, and gets the ball carrier down. And so do you think this is more like a midline read? It looks like, um, you know, Derrick Henry is coming downhill and possibly cutting there. But it looks like Mariota is possibly reading Trent Murphy here. When you say it looks like maybe like oh, a yeah. midline type read. Because they, they let him they let, they let him go free. Um, yeah. and, you know, obviously you're not going to let a, a defensive end go free. So he definitely audible to it. And he, he read Trent Murphy. And right now, I mean, I would say we're, we're, we're losing right now i mean okay. Hoyer's getting off a block right now so he's getting he's winning he's winning his gap uh tremaine is winning his gap right now and it's just the fact that you know merida has great athletic ability um so he's going to try to beat one of us me right here i don't have the best technique um i'm a little high you know my my outside foot uh is up which should be the other way so i can generate more power uh All right but, you know, just having a good football awareness and, you know, at the end of the day, it just comes comes down to somebody making a play. Right. So, you know, your your leverage isn't the best. Your eyes are in the right spot. You have your eyes on the ball. Obviously, you're tracking Mariota, um, but you'd like to have a little better leverage. Almost you can almost see the hips of this tight end almost, uh, you know, and his shoulder pads kind of almost reach blocking in a sense right. with that, you know, that outside hand. Kind of, He has decent leverage on you, but. 
What I like about this play by you is that you keep your feet moving. Yes, your hands, and you may be sta- you know you're stacking him, and you know he has a good job. Uh, does a good job of, of covering you up, but if you keep your feet moving, you're able to disengage, and that's exactly what you do here against, obviously, a Mariota, who is a really athletic uh, quarterback here. Uh, so it's a good job of keeping your feet moving, and although you lo- you know, you know may have been losing initially positional uh, leverage-wise, uh, you do a good job keeping your feet moving and you know not giving him that edge here, and you minimize this run here by Mariota. Right. Game. It's 6-13 on the clock. Uh, we're tied at zero. It's second and 10. And the Jets are in 11 personnel. Uh, you're down in the box right here uh, with your eyes on the tight end here. So I want to talk about this run. I'll let it roll real quick so everyone can see what kind of run it is. Uh, it's a little inside zone split flow with that tight end kind of inserting onto the backside linebacker, almost like a zone version of an isolation run here. Uh, but I want to talk about your pre to post net processing here, Dean, because initially if this run were to stay front side and all of these guys were to block out here, um, you know, what gap would you have? So right now I would have the C gap. You know, Trent Murphy, he's outside, so he has the D gap. I have the C gap. Uh, is that Ed? That's in... Ed Oliver, the, yep. Yeah, that's Ed has the B gap. And, you know, Corey has the A gap. Uh, other Corey has that A gap. You know, Julian has the B gap. So we're all gapped out, you know? Yeah, um, you're definitely and you're good, in good shape. Right. So if the run stayed front side, you know, we all would keep integrity of our gaps and it's when you're one-on-one okay so then obviously post snap this is what happens guys you're going to get that tight end coming across the formation and as as i said uh blocking stanford here and lev bell is basically coming downhill and uh he's going to cut it right up inside here so what happens guys you got to think about this way this tight end coming across the formation it means that there's one last gap that the Bills have to defend on the backside of this formation. So your assignment changes, right here, Dean? Yes. So talk about what gap becomes yours now. You're not a C-gap player now. With this tight end coming across, where's your your gap? Where's your assignment? So now I have the A-gap. So I'm communicating with uh, Corey Thompson and Julian saying back, 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 and I'm going to that A-gap. I kind of could feel Corey in my gap a little bit, so I was wanting to play off of him, and then at the last second he, uh, he, you know, went over to his gap um so i could have been a little bit faster shooting that gap uh and trying to you know get a tfl and maintaining my gap uh but knowing just the kind of runner Le'Veon is he's he's a little bit patient and he's one of the best backs in the league to actually just jump jump cut and go anywhere yeah Uh, so i kind (laughs) of just tried to stay behind the ball and just follow that um but yeah, I mean, we we ended up minimizing it to a what a one or two yard gain. Yeah. Um. So everyone did their did their part. You know, we just played football and got the ball carrier down. Yeah, that's that's what's so critical about these plays and this defense. You guys are such a, a gap sound defense that you know plays like this that uh, a lot of teams do this. They try to test you guys pre to post snap processing, especially when you have you know guys that aren't you know full time starters like Corey Thompson, Stanford, and even yourself being a part time role player um they try to test you and this is what dean was talking about regardless of what role you're playing or how many snaps you played in last year or how many snaps you played in last week you have to be ready to play you have to be ready as if you're the starter and on this play they tried testing him again and he's very sound and he communicates to Corey right there that hey you know back 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 get into your gap i'm the new uh, player right here a new a gap player and so you see Corey thompson have to work over the top and stanford is on the uh, outside shoulder of the tight end that's coming to block him so you guys have a really good job of do a really good job of kind of walling this playoff minimizing it and processing pre to post snap and when that happens you only get a one to two yard gain sometimes a no gain or tackle for loss yeah. all right dean we're in the fourth quarter 8 12 on the clock the jets are up 10 to 3 it's second and six and they send out a tight bunch formation to the bottom of the screen and I want you guys to pay attention to Dean right here. He's in the slot. He's on the point man, Jamison Crowder right here. And, Dean, I want you to talk about what happens before the snap. We'll get to the stuff after the snap, but what happens prior to the snap here and your role as that point defender, as that nickel defender right here against Jamison Crowder? Okay. So um, right here, I mean, I'm obviously at nickel, and um, the, nickel, the nickel is the, the, ge- the general on the field. He is the guy that makes all the calls. He's the guy that um, tells them what we're playing. So obviously we're in a man coverage right here. I think some sort of five-man pressure. 
Right. Uh, and, you know, I'm telling uh, Taryn and I'm telling Saran, like, you know, all right, well, you know, I'm going to lock Crowder. You guys, you know, play in and out um, on one and three. Ball so snap. you have the point man, right? You have the point yes. man here, Crowder. You're going to take him wherever he goes, you know, wherever he runs, whatever route he runs, you're getting in his pocket. And then uh, Taryn Johnson and Saran Neal are pattern matching these routes uh, by uh, the number one and number three receiver. And you're going to see Robbie Anderson just run a curl right up the numbers here. And so they're left to sort out the left, uh, the last two receivers of this bunch formation, correct? Yep. So uh, obviously Crowder um, runs to the middle of the field and you're getting into his hip pocket. This is not an easy task. Obviously he's a shifty, a smaller shifty wide receiver. He's got some speed to him. And they're running him on almost what looks like to be a deep corner. So this is not an easy task for you, right? No, not at all. Um, I what what they what they call it in today's age is um, actually like a Seattle route. So okay. teams try to hit us with you know overs like overs overs overs, and they try to to get us over pursuing on the over route, and then they yeah. come back with the Seattle. So um, it's actually hard to uh to maintain um your your leverage when you kind of can feel that over route coming. Yeah. But knowing someone like Crowder, his, his, uh, his shoulders didn't completely turn. So I kind of felt like there was some vertical aspect of the route coming mm -hmm. and, you know, us playing, um, man, and I have my post safety right over top. I don't have yeah. to be over top. I can be right, you know, forearms length and underneath the route. I love that you mentioned that because leverage and, and, and feeling, uh, you know, that route coming or, or uh, across the field and it doesn't happen. Um, as you said, yeah, you're right. I mean, he kind of almost squares up to the post safety right here. Um, and, you know, you don't have to play. You're completely leveraging over the top of the crosser there. So uh, good work by you of just, you know, maintaining your discipline, staying in that hip pocket, continuing with that disruption, staying on his hip, using your hands there. And then it's pretty obvious when he, you know, he turns his his uh, shoulder pads, his helmet, and he's looking back that he now is heading uh, to the corner here. Uh, so good job by you of staying in that guy's hip pocket. And uh, the pressure uh, gets home to Darnold here. They don't get the sack, but the pressure forces him to drop back in the pocket and end up having to throw it away where, you know, Darnold's a pretty mobile quarterback. He's not Josh Allen's uh, level, but he's a guy that can play outside the structure. And if he gets outside here, um, you guys get into the scramble drill, um, some some things can happen here. So it's a good job by that pressure um, and that little five-man game that the Bills ran. Um, and you'll see it better from the end zone angle to kind of help uh, coverage. You know, sometimes coverage, you know, can create pressure. Sometimes right. pressure can create good coverage. So this is one of those plays that kind of both were, in, you know, in, in tune here. So I want to look at it from the snap here and kind of walk us through what's happening um, off this the right side here with uh, Kurt Coleman uh, right into the boundary and what the Bills are running here. Um, with Daryl Johnson. I know exactly what this play call was again. Yeah, it was a safety five man pressure. Um, so obviously receive three receivers to the left and we're in man. So the the corners are gonna match the receivers in the nickel. Um, and right now um, there's a stunt going on, which we win the stunt, our defensive line wins. Obviously like, you know, it's great complimentary football where the defensive line helps us out a lot in a coverage to where the, there's no low help for us. So we kind of have to strap on and, and really, uh, when our, when our, uh, one-on-one -on -one because there's no low hope, no low hole help. Um, so thank, thanks to the, uh, the upfront guys, <laughs> they got us, they got us right. Um, helped us out a lot. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that too, because as the ball snap again, watch, uh, how everything matches up here is Thompson. He's got the tight end. And it looks like Stanford's looking to the running back. So he may possibly yeah. have the running back, um, it, you know, as that, uh, you know, play unfolds. But that running back stays in. So you really don't. You really don't have any help. And it even looks like it may have been some type of green dog because after that running back stays in the block, you see Stanford kind of uh, eventually kind of insert here. But uh, he's obviously doing it from depth. So you have no help underneath. And that's why I think it was a great job of you of getting to the low side of that. Uh, receiver, as you said, you know, playing the the backside of this receiver here, got, getting into that trail technique, and then just reading the guy's hips and, and shoulder pads as he uh, bends it back to the corner here. So, 
Uh, good job by, you know, a five-man pressure. A good job by uh, Daryl Johnson and Ed Oliver on this little pressure here and this little stunt because um, you see, uh, I think this is actually one of your former teammates, uh, Connor McDermott at guard right here. Uh, he has to play heavy. He has to play heavy on Ed Oliver here. And that heavy play on Ed Oliver, because he's a handful uh, in that gap, gives a soft edge right here to Daryl Johnson to get pressure right in Darnold's face. So good play right up the middle. Pressure up the middle on a quarterback is the worst type of pressure. And that pressure forces Darnold to kind of retreat and throw the ball away uh, with some good coverage down the field. All right, Dean, 10-3, to three, the Jets are up. And we're in the fourth quarter in the last game of the regular season, 335 left on the clock. Ball on the 28-yard line, and the Jets are going to uh, do a Y exchange here. They're going to put the tight end to the top of the screen, into the boundary, and that's you shifting uh, with the tight end. So it's it's showing as uh, man coverage, guys. And so on the snap, what they're going to try to do is, is run a little play-action fake uh, to Lev Bell right here into the boundary and then sneak out this tight end uh, across the field and kind of test Dean Marlowe's eyes and processing post-snap. So... Dean, talk about the coverage here, if it's true man-to-man, -man, and uh, who are you guarding right here? Is this tight end? Are you familiar with him? Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, right now, before the motion, obviously I'm to the left because of the passing strength. Um, he motions, the passing strength changes. Once again, the passing strength is going into the boundary. So something is something is up. All right. Um, we are in man coverage right here. Uh, it's a 12 personnel, but a 21 personnel look. Yep. With the other tight end being a fullback. Um, so 87 right there is actually one of my, my really good friends, my teammate of four years at James Madison University. Uh, so it was, a, it was a fun game actually going up against each other. And I was actually the one guarding him uh, when I was in a lot of the times. Um, but here, man, I just it's all about like your eye progression and your eye discipline. And, you know, I'm obviously wearing cover one, which is outside leverage man technique and we have help from the backers inside right. Right. um so you know the backers get you know a little bit caught on the, on the play fake and my eyes are just on uh da as i call him <laughs> daniel brown <laughs> um and you know obviously i'm playing outside leverage i'm going to be in chase mode trying to sort through all that traffic and you know my job is to either get the ball out uh at this point or just if he catches it to get him right down um and that's what i did i tried to get the ball out a little bit uh but you know he has good hands he has good hands and <laughs> i did what uh, i can and uh, i minimized the game to what maybe two three yards yep and i mean that's huge because again from the out from the onset here you're playing with that outside leverage on on that tight end and so you're already in chase mode as you mentioned because you see coleman right here Corey thompson and Stanford right here, they are your underneath support. But as the Jets run, you know, their typical zone run concept, they're moving all of these gaps, you know, horizontally across the field here into the boundary. So, of course, these linebackers and, and second level defenders have to kind of chase those gaps in, in a sense. And so that's why they're not really there to help support. You'd like to see them kind of run a little interference, maybe get a piece of that tight end. It looks like Corey Thompson tries to, but he's just quite out of reach and he's not able to redirect him or, you know, throw off that stem. But uh, this obviously is a play where you're kind of at a disadvantage, uh, but you're processing your ability to read that tight end, your former teammate, as he's leaking out there. He doesn't really sell that he's run blocking here at all and just tries leaking out the backside here. This is a big play because if uh, Darnold is able to get this to him and you're out of position, if you did not process quicker uh, than you did on this play, there's a good chance that he's going to have some green out here versus Jaquan Johnson and Saran Neal, I believe, are the deep safeties here. Um, and yeah. this obviously is a big play. I mean, it's something that you saw earlier in the game, too, right? They had a nice little package out of this uh, 12 personnel set. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've, they've been, they were doing that probably 10 times. Wow, that's that's amazing, and and you know obviously that right there is a, a you know a testament to your discipline and your eye discipline because you could have easily just said you know because where's where's your gap if this were a run uh, an outside zone run here which gap would be yours? I have the D gap, so I'm outside of 87, which I would have to you know force everything back in. And that's what you know fans need to realize that you know when you become that big nickel when you're down in the box like Coleman is here. You know, a lot of times uh, in this defense, you're, you're reading run to pass. Your processing is run to pass your keys. That's how you're reading your keys. And so a lot of times, you know, on these play action passes and, 
you know, the Bills defense, just the way it's schemed up with their linebackers, it's a fast flowing defense. You know, McDermott and Frazier want you guys coming downhill, stopping the run first, and then playing pass. Um, it, it's one of those uh, defenses that stresses run gap integrity. And so you have to be on top of your game when it comes to your reads, um, your keys, and processing run to pass. Because if you're not, you know, plays could really open up here off of play action. And this one, they tried fooling you, but you were disciplined. And you're able to bring down your former teammate and minimize that play to like a two or three yard gain. All right, Dean, that was a fun film session. It was good catching up with you. I appreciate you coming on. Um, uh, where can everyone follow you on social media and uh, what, anything going on uh, on a day to day basis in uh, downtown Buffalo? Oh, no. I mean, you know, my social media platforms are, are my name. Um, you just, you know, type it in and they're there. Um, you know, nothing going on special. Just me and the wife and the dogs are just trying to stay sane and you know take it day by day and stay accountable of what we have to take care of and uh just you know making the most of the situation now i'm glad you mentioned that because you know it, one thing that this pandemic has taught us is uh the human side of of life i mean um you know we saw the draft uh, virtually done and uh, i thought it was really cool how everything has unfolded i know these are tough times but uh to have a guy like you on a professional player come on and break down some film with me um, I truly appreciate that. And obviously the fans do as well, Dean. So I uh, hope to do this again very soon sometime this offseason. and appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, Eric.